hello, everybody. Guess, guess what program this is. You give up? It's, it's the BBC Dance Orchestra under the misguided direct, under the direction of Henry Hall, coming to you through the courtesy of and by the grace of and through no fault of my own. And for your ama- amusement tonight, we present the straining haunts, the haunting strains of Molly, Mari, and Mary, the wobbling. A warbling of Don Donovan and George Elric, and as our guest, a guest tonight, Jimmy Kennedy and Michael Carr, and and last but not last, least but not uh, Oliver Wakefield, the voice of inexperience, saying, "Good night, everybody. Good night." Good, just a moment, Oliver. This is no time for saying good night. We haven't begun the program yet. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Henry. I don't usually let little things like a program worry me, but of course. <laughs> If you insist on your little... uh, The first number will be... It had to be you. with me, to a certain extent. Uh, not, of course, that it has anything to do with Molly's, uh, but I don't know, it's, it's, it's all on the, you know, between men. <laughs> but actually, what I'm trying to lead up to this is, is a new game, just over f- f- from the United. And I'm sure you've all heard of the, the knock, knock uh, uh, doings, and, and you've all un- undoubtedly played handies in, in the pictures. Uh, but... This, this new game is called the business game, and, and you can play it <laughs> practically anywhere, you know. 
as long as you're friends. And, and this new game is, is called The Business. And I've already explained the rudiments of it to Mr. Hall and that famous indoor sportsman. And <laughs> he has very kindly offered to, to help me out. Are you ready, Henry? Yes, I'm ready. All right. Here goes. Uh, I'm in business. What's your business? Well, I'm, I'm a street cleaner. Well, how's business? Picking up. <laughs> <laughs> As you can imagine, I wasn't frightfully fond of that, that business, and so I, I'm in another business. Well, what's your business? I'm a chicken farmer. How's business? Foul. <laughs> <laughs> it might surprise you, but I'm also in business. Well, I didn't think it was a business, you know. I thought it was sort of pleasure. <laughs> but... <laughs> However, what is your business? I'm the BBC Dance Orchestra Director. Well, how's business? All right. <laughs> <coughs> well, if it's all right with you, it's all right with me. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, that was the business game, explained to you by the voice of inexperience, and uh, my voice also. Our next number has the title, The Fairy on the Christmas Tree. to interrupt the program, 
but I have just had an urgent telegram from little Puddleton on the cuff. It says, My small son Willie refuses to go to bed unless Mr. Wakefield says something to him. Signed, Upset Mother. Oliver, won't you please say something to Willie? <laughs> Hello, Willie. <laughs> The same serenade that I tenderly played on a night long ago. There were stars in the sky, and I sang beneath the roses, but she gave not a sign that she'd ever be mine, and my love story closes. Oh, why must the south wind be bringing? Oh, why must my heart keep on singing? Serenading the night from the past comes to haunt me. When I hear that refrain, oh, my heart aches again for that lost love of mine. Oh, my. Jimmy Kennedy is my guest in another of our series of Snapshots of the Songwriters, in which we revive memories of their most popular songs. You all recognize this tune we are playing, of course. Jimmy Kennedy wrote the lyric of The Teddy Bear's Picnic. Now come along, Jimmy. Tell us all about your songs. You've written many others besides Serenade of the Night and Teddy Bear's Picnic. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Henry. Yes, I, I have been rather fortunate with some of my songs, like, like this one I wrote with Will Gross. Of course, you couldn't leave out the Isle of Capri, but tell me, what was your first big hit? I think, uh, Oh Donna Clara. Of course, that was way back in about 1930. Then there was Play to Me Gypsy. You ought to remember that, Henry. You introduced it over here about, oh, about three, three years ago. And do you think Play to Me Gypsy was more popular than Capri? Well, it's, it's really very hard to say, but uh, Capri was certainly the bigger of the two in America. 
then, of course, I had a lot of other songs like Roll Along Covered Wagon, Mammy Mine, Little Golden Locket, and, and of course, Red Sails in the Sunset. Henry, you remember you took that to America for me. It was one of my biggest successes over there. Yes. You know, Jimmy, you are one of the writers who have done a lot to change the songwriting situation in this country. There was a time, not so long ago, when a British song was unknown in America, but you can claim, in the words of another of your famous titles, that my song goes round the world. Well, I don't know about that, really. But I seem to have gone round the world for my songs. Uh, take take Cafe Continental, for instance. Oh, that's one of your story songs, isn't it? Tell me, there's an interesting story behind it. Yes, there is. Uh, a really marvellous story. Uh, last year, I was in Budapest with my friend Will Gross. And uh, one evening, we happened to be in a boulevard cafe, one of those places just the boulevard, you know, and uh, watching the, power, the people pass by. And uh, there was a rather good-looking young fellow sitting at a table quite near us who, who took no notice of anything at all until a very, very pretty girl came in. And, and just as she passed the, the, the young man's table, she dropped a glove. And, of course, he was very, very quick to pick it up. Then, after a few words, they sat down together. Well, we left the place, and about an hour later, we went in another cafe. And would you believe it, we saw the whole thing take place again. Different cafe, different fellow, but the same girl. You mean, she drops her glove again? Exactly. And that actual line gave us the idea for the song uh, at the Cafe Continental. No. Is it really true? Good gracious, no. I just made it up. You wanted a story, didn't you? And uh, I like to put my stories into lyrics. But, of course, lyrics would be uh, no good at all without that certain thing, the music. Uh, uh, Q for me. Good evening, Henry. Hello, Jimmy. How do band? Reading his little microphone. Good evening, listeners. Good evening, Michael. But you're a bit hasty, because I haven't introduced you yet. Well, now, anyhow, ladies and gentlemen, this is another of our famous British songwriters, Michael Carr, whose songs have also gone round the world. Did I hear you mention without that certain thing? Yes. If you had given me a chance, I was going to introduce you with one of your first big successes. And now we want to see what else you've written. Well, I, I wrote a few others just to keep that one company. Two little songs I rather liked, Old Faithful and Dinner for One, Please, James. Oh, okay. Cue the song. And then, of course, Henry, I went all tender and, and wrote orchids to my lady. Well, that was a grand tune. Now, come on, Michael, you're getting bashful. <laughs> of course, uh, quite a lot more. Oh, yes, Henry, you remember my waltz, mademoiselle, and the girl with the dreamy eyes. I love you very much, madame. It's getting around and about. Yip, Neddy, dreamy serenade. And the gentleman obviously doesn't believe. Whew. Now, that's a good catalogue, isn't it? Well, I think it's quite a good monologue, I Michael. said catalogue. <laughs> I hadn't finished. Of course, there's Old Timer and Tiddly Winks and How, and I was in the mood. He was a handsome young soldier, and my big American song, Strange. Yes, Michael. It certainly does seem a pretty good list. Of course, these tunes were written before you and Jimmy Kennedy came together as collaborators. Yes, that's right. By the way, Jimmy, do you remember the first song we wrote together? Uh, well, I think I know the answer to that one, Michael. <laughs> General's fast asleep. You won't see any big parade. There won't be any bugle played. Sad to say, no war today, but the general's fast asleep. Soldiers hold in the mighty row. They've been told that to fight the foe. Sad to say, no war today, but the general's fast asleep. Yes, you made that tune pretty famous, Henry, didn't you? Then we wrote the uh, Sunset Trail, Henry. And our signature tune, A Couple of April Fools. Speak for yourself, Mr. Kennedy. I don't know about A Couple of April Fools, but you're a couple of Irishmen, aren't you? Well, I certainly am. I'm sort of half and half, Henry. Half and half? All right, we'll have it your way. <laughs> well, for A Couple of Irishmen, you wrote a jolly good Scottish song in Misty Islands of the Highlands. What about you boys singing a chorus for us? Henry, I don't think you've heard me sing. You better have Mike. He's the, the crooner. <laughs> oh, yeah? I don't like the way you sing. <laughs> Misty Islands of the Highlands That's where this heart of mine Forever longs to be Misty islands Of the highlands Homeland of man 
memories where the heather meets the sea. White crofter's cabin that beckons from the glen. Sweet voice that's singing, will ye no come back again? Misty islands of the highlands, that's where this heart of mine forever longs to be. Thank you, Michael. You ought to do very well on the films. Henry, you know, they don't make silent films anymore. <laughs> well, by the way, you have done some music for films, haven't you? Yes, we did uh, Soft Lights and Sweet Music, the Ambrose picture, you know. Uh, there was a tune in that that you rather liked, to remember. We're tops on Saturday night. Me too. Quiet, please, Michael. Now, come on, you two. I thought the perfect team never argued. Let's hear more about your picture song. Oh, Henry, there was that Jack Hitton picture. We had a nice proper song in that. <laughs> tune of this about ten years ago when he was in college, and I wrote the music when I was in uh, bed. Oh, and so sometimes you write the lyrics and Jimmy does the tune. Oh, yes, didn't you know we're mother's clever little boys? And of course, in addition to films, you've turned out some show tunes. Uh, yes, Henry, right now Michael and I have uh, some tunes in George Black's OK for Sound. Free, there's a new world. Oh, and Henry, we've got that lovely Scotch song. I'd like George to sing OK for Sound. All right. We'll have it. For sound, when the sound you like to hear come a trickling through your ear. Now don't say that sounds okay. Say okay for sound, okay for sound. When you hear the bacon sizz, or the sound of soda fizz. Now don't say that sounds okay. Say okay for sound. In the popping of the champagne cork, in the ringing of the wedding bell. In the crackle of a five-pound note, each little sound is the sweetest music. Okay for sound. When you hear the favorite wind, when the doctor says it's twins, now don't say that sounds okay, say okay for sound. Before we close this interview with Jimmy Kennedy and Michael Carr, I want to give you a little picture of these songwriters as I see them. Michael Carr likes to give the impression that he's just a crazy Irishman, but with all the grand songs he's given us, he's anything but crazy. Jimmy Kennedy, rather quiet, almost a studio type, he has given us a lot of pleasure from his songs too. With their two different personalities, they have one bond in common. And from this bond came their newest hit song, Did Your Mother Come From Ireland? And now Michael Carr is going to sing it for us. Did your mother come from Ireland? Has there something in you, Irish? Will you tell me where you get those Irish eyes? And be 
before she left Killarney Did your mother kiss the Blarney Cause your little touch of brogue you can't disguise Faith, I wouldn't be romancing I can almost see you dancing While the Kerry Pipers play Sure, and maybe we'll be sharing In the shamrock you'll be wearing On the next St. Patrick's Day Did your mother come from Ireland? Cause there's something in you Irish And that bit of Irish steals my heart away Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Henry Bell. Thank you, Jimmy. And now, to round off this program... Sing me a swing song. That's robust, feeling the way I am. And your band will go bust if it ain't got that jam. When a buddy meets a buddy on a ballroom floor, then a buddy asks a buddy, What's a swing band for? Oh, baby, I don't want you to croon soft and mellow. Let me warn you in advance, sing me a swing song and let me dance. Oh, baby, I don't want any moon, bright and yellow. You can have your sweet romance, sing me a swing song and let me dance. Say, Mr. Trombone, play some corn, I ain't caring what, no. Mr. Trumpet, grab a horn, brother, give me hot notes. Oh, baby, I don't want any tune on a cello. Give the rhythm man a chance. Sing me a swing song and let me dance. 